Bush not only as a catastrophe, as an end to ordered progress, but they believe that such a catastrophe can be brought about only by outside forces. If a revolution threatens to upset the capitalist system, that is not because of the development of the con contradictions of that system itself, but is due to quote-unquote agitators. So uh, and then there's a whole discussion here about the negation of negation. And they use as an example a Cornforth does. Part of what we talked about in the introduction of this discussion about the Marxist formula for development, starting from what they call primitive communism of human society, moving to slavery, moving from slavery uh, to feudalism, moving from feudalism to capitalism, capitalism to communism. And so uh, they want to talk about the negation of negation. For example, uh, the advent of, uh, of uh, so we start with, with uh, primitive communism. And uh, then with the rise of real communism, which is when white people have it, uh, uh, it negates the other primitive communism. It's a, a negation of that, but it takes, it to, takes society to a much higher level. That's the logic that's there. And uh, we do believe in negation of negation. We see things that uh, help us to understand that more and more every day. Every time you look uh, and see the imperialists um, uh, exporting uh, uh, the production, the productive cas uh, uh, capacity, uh, all of the uh, ability, uh, of all of the production is now more and more of it happening outside of the European uh, uh, U.S. centers. It's being done in other places around the world. Uh, so uh, even though it's being done to exploit cheaper labor and what have you, it's moving the uh, production, productive process from out of the capitalist centers to what's been referred to in some instances by some people as the periphery. It's not the periphery, it's really the, the center. Uh, and so you see the actual technological technology and development being taken from uh, America uh, to the Philippines, uh, to uh, other places uh, like in the world, Mexico and other places. I mean, uh, Mexico is not so far, you know, uh, is not as far away as much of Africa, but uh, it's a form of negation. So uh, in the first place that uh, they, would, they would prevent us from being able uh, to uh, engage in, in, uh, in production and uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, a certain uh, a kind of production. They would uh, make it impossible for us to do this as a condition for being able to control and rule uh, Africa and the rest of the world. In fact, one of the reasons that I'm convinced that Saddam Hussein was overthrown uh, was the fact that uh, he was uh, industrializing, uh, trying to industrialize uh, Iraq. And if it, Iraq were industrialized, that means more and more uh, the Iraqis uh, could use their own oil, and uh, the people in the Middle East could use their own oil, et cetera, and they wouldn't have to come here. Uh, so they make it, make it impossible or difficult for production to happen among uh, the colonized uh, areas of the world. And now what they find themselves doing is uh, taking the production process more and more uh, to the colonized areas of the world. Uh, the production is cheaper and what have you. So uh, this is a certain form of negation of negation. Yeah. So uh, I want to just say, um, just briefly, I, I would just read a little. I'm on page 96 on the... Uh, on the uh, part, the bottom part of the page under the uh, italicized uh, subhead, a comprehensive and important law of development. And it reads, in, in discussing the negation of negation, we must again stress what, we, what was said earlier, namely that the essence of dialectics is to study a process in all its concreteness, to work out how it actually takes place and not to impose on it some preconceived scheme and then try to prove the necessity of the real process reproducing the ideal scheme. 
We do not say in advance that every process will exemplify the negation of negation. Still, less do we use this conception to try to prove anything. And for me, uh, the most important part of this uh, statement is the first part in terms of uh, the essence of dialectics. It's the study of process in all its concreteness. And this is not what the Marxists have done. They have uh, tried to affix to uh, the reality of African people here and else place some preconceived notion of what Marxism requires. And uh, they would tell us uh, and have told us uh, when we're struggling inside this country uh, that the struggle for uh, independence of African people to achievement of self-determination is somehow to destroy the unity of this imaginary united working class. Uh, multinational working class. That's the logic that they, they have not looked at it. They will say to us what Marx said about this, what Trotsky said about this, what Stalin said about this, what Mao said about this, but they will not come up with anything that shows a real investigation of the concrete reality that African people are confronted with here and around the world and make that the basis, the starting point of the discussion. And this, that's what African internationalism, it requires that to be the starting point of the discussion. We don't start uh, looking at something based on what Marx said. We start uh, uh, looking at something uh, based on our reality as a people. And when we look at our reality as a people, we understand that our reality did not begin in Houston, Texas, or, or Accra, Ghana, or, or someplace in Haiti. It began on the continent of Africa. And I'm not just talking about some long-term stuff where you go back and study the pyramids of Egypt and all of that, which, you know, if that makes you feel, if that makes your heart flutter, I think you should do it. But what I am talking about is the development of the, of the, of the world that we live in, the world that we live in right now, uh, and what gave rise to it, and locked us into this situation of oppression and exploitation. And that happened to us as African people, not as Afro-Americans, not as descendants of slaves, not as uh, uh, Haitians or Jamaicans or, or, or anything like that. It happened to us as one people, and that's the only thing that offers us an explanation for Africa and African people worldwide. Why is it that black people all around the world suffer the same goddamn consequences, treated the same uh, 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 um, everywhere we live? And of course, that's because the contradiction that gave rise to the whole rotten, foul social system that we know as capitalism, the contradiction of the empire going out and attacking Mother Africa and then uh, capturing African people and then at gunpoint uh, 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 forcing us, uh, transferring us all around the world and locking us into a process of production for Europe and European and the whole capitalist system, that's what we're fighting against. We're not fighting against some New Jersey Negroes. I mean, the whole thing is what we are fighting against, and we have to have the ability to see the whole picture. That's what African internationalism allows us to do. That's because we are, we are in fact, dialectical and historical materialists. So I'm going to uh, end it right now and, uh, so that we have enough time for, uh, for discussion. And hopefully uh, uh, people will have uh, found something in here worth, uh, in this discussion, worth talking about. Uhuru, comrades. Uhuru. It's in the, huh?
then he asks, um, which is, you know, uh, I'm sure the answer will be very apparent, but should black people separate from the liberal democratic party and form a socialist party to which we have the African People's Socialist Party? Yeah, I just want to we, when we talk about the Socialist Party, most times, without intending to, we are talking about social democracy, a social democratic situation, and it's based on the assumption that political power will be achieved through the electoral process. And which is not to say that we don't use the electoral process. Comrade uh, Kile, you are the best example of the fact that we do use the electoral process. But we use the electoral process as a means, as a stepping stone, uh, to take us uh, uh, to uh, a great advantage in terms of actual capture of political power. So uh, for us, the question, we have a party. We have the African People's Socialist Party. It's an international party, and it's an internationalist party. Uh, and uh, uh, we engage in electoral politic, and we engage in struggle on every, using every form uh, possible. Uh, the actual outcome is what really uh, we are concerned with, and that is the acquisition of political power, the liberation of Africa and African people worldwide. And if you could do that by making and distributing peanut butter sandwiches, we'd say do that. But uh, chances are it's going to take something different in order to do it, and that's what we are preparing everybody to do. That's why we're having this discussion right now. Uhuru. for and state of positive, vertical, symbiotic development. All that is good and positive in the old that is being negated, capitalism, is preserved and continuously improved, being improved in building of and to build the new socialism. Comrade Crown from St. Petersburg comments, appreciate your analysis, Chairman, which is always on point. Overturning the system is key. Even Bernie Sanders bought a four, four to five million dollar home right after he was bought out by the Democrats. We need a, we need a system that can't be bought and that is our own. Um, and I'm just waiting for more questions uh, to be sent in. So make sure you comment in the chat section your question um, and or comment for the chair of Malia Chatella. And again, you know, it's really important for everybody to participate and engage in this discussion. You know, get these ideas expounded on more, things that you did not understand. This is your opportunity right now to ask the chairman um, to deepen some of the things that he's talked about on today. So um, make sure you are commenting right in the comment section your question and or comment for the chairman. And um, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I just want to say that. I just want to remind comrades that, um, that theory is really important. And we've been fighting for theory now uh, for the totality of our existence. And, um, you know, we, we started out in, in many ways uh, the same place that many folk did uh, with some kind of uh, uh, liberal uh, approach to understanding that was. Uh, that was uh, informed by our relationship to the system itself, that uh, you know, the, the good people were sort of liberal people and uh, the bad people were not. And then uh, we became an educated enough to be disgusted uh, by the liberal people also. And then at one point, we became just black nationalists and, and you know, just understood that, uh, that white people were imposing all kinds of horrible things uh, 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 on the people, we were uh, black nationalists, but then uh, there were so many uh, questions that uh, being black nationalists uh, could not uh, explain to us because it could not explain, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, Duvoyer uh, in Haiti. It could not explain uh, for us uh, uh, this animal um, uh, uh, in Congo um, uh, who participated in killing Lumumba. They couldn't explain the sellout Uncle Tom Negro uh, right in the same town that we lived in. So it couldn't just be black people versus white people if something else was at work. And we had to really study to try to understand that. And then, of course, uh, in the same time we're doing this, we're fighting against these white so-called Marxists. If, if it weren't the liberals who were coming uh, to save us uh, uh, from ourselves and civilize us, uh, then it was the Marxists who were coming to save us from ourselves and civilize us. And uh, we had to uh, struggle against them. And the, but the Marxists forced us to really uh, have to, uh, uh, to, uh, to dig into the science of, of, uh, of what, was, what we were confronted with. And that's been extremely important. And uh, uh, it, 
it forced us to look at the whole question of philosophy. Uh, uh, and because we all do have philosophy, but usually it's the philosophy of the oppressor. It forced us to, uh, in fact, our party, if you go back from, from our inception, you will not find a time uh, where, we were, where we're not trying to bring into the discussion a real materialist-based assessment of our reality, uh, where others were often simply uh, lighting, having candlelit ceremonies and, and you, know, uh, you know, wearing dashikis and being quote unquote black. You know, we were actually trying to, uh, uh, to sum up what, is, what in the hell was going on in the world, what was happening with us, and how all of this played uh, into what it was that we had to do in our condition. So we've been fighting this struggle uh, for a long time. And, and uh, it was in the process of, of really of fighting for our liberation that we were forced uh, to do this. And uh, so uh, theory is extremely important. It's extremely important. And it took us a while to really get the depth, to grasp just how important the worldview is. Because if your worldview uh, is misshapen, uh, uh, then you can be really smart. You can really, really, really be smart. And, uh, 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 and as long as you are uh, asking uh, the wrong questions, you just come up with a lot of smart, wrong answers. And, and so the, you know, the, to discover the science is really important. So theory is not something to be sneezed at, one. But the other thing is that practice is primary. And practice uh, is through our practice that we, 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 you know, learn as well. And we study everything that we can. We study past revolutionaries. We study revolutions that's happening now. Uh, but we engage in actual struggle because that's the way we test it. That's the way we know whether or not the theory means anything, whether it's realistic, how, whether it can grasp the masses of our people, uh, et cetera. So uh, uh, theory is critical, but practice uh, is primary. And what we've always said is that practice, uh, we said that theory uh, without practice uh, is, is meaningless, and practice without theory is blind. And so uh, we don't want to be blind and meaningless, nor blind or meaningless. Uhuru. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we have a comment from Sherwin Pitty of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Says, um, Solidarity Committee, St. Louis, saluting the brilliant teaching of Chairman Molly Ashutella, Unity Through Reparations, and asks, my question is, what is neoliberalism, and does it fit into African internationalist understanding? I hear this term often and don't know what it is. Thank you. Uhuru. <laughs> it is a term that's used often, and I don't, I'm not sure anybody knows what it means. And I'm not being facetious when I say that. It's sort of like lupus. You know, like uh, 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 some kind of disease that the doctors don't know what the hell it is. They call it a syndrome, and, and it's a lupus. And uh, uh, and if it finds out that this ain't lupus, it's something else. But it's another syndrome. And I think that uh, when you look at this whole question of neoliberalism, is that what's being talked about? If you even Google it, you will see that the neoliberals themselves say, "Well, we don't know exactly what it is. We call it different people call it different things." I I just know this, the fundamental contradiction on the planet Earth in the world today is the contradiction between oppressed and oppressor nations. Every other contradiction revolves around that and in fact gives, is given life by that. We destroy this contradiction between oppressed and oppressor nation, then it opens up the door to taking on all the other questions. African colonialism, uh, the enslavement and, and, and colonization of African and other peoples around the world is the foundation upon which the whole rotten social system rests, whether it calls itself neoliberal, neocolonial, neo, neo uh, what have you, that is the basis uh, for, uh, for its existence. So uh, we'll work on the neoliberal uh, definition as we move forward, uh, but death to imperialism, overturn this, this colonial domination of Africa and African people around the world. I haven't the slightest idea what neoliberalism is, and I hear all the time. I have last meeting I was in, uh, national meeting, people threw that word around and uh, they threw it around, uh, you know, uh, with a knowing look in their eye, like, you know, see how clever I am, right? And you are, because it's deeper than me. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a question from Nasir Al Amin asks Can chairmen speak more on the problems with our people following the ADOS movement slash agenda? The American descendants. I, I think that, uh, I don't know. I mean, there may be a lot of people following that. I mean, it seems to be uh, you can find that on social media. Uh, but for me, uh, uh, two things. One, uh, whatever is basis, and, and I distrust this basis. I'm suspicious of its existence, uh, its emergence. Uh, uh, it is an assault on the unity of Africa and African people worldwide. It is an assault. And uh, to see such an assault emerge uh, at this critical time, it's like all the other assaults that uh, try to serve to divide African people from the faggot bashing uh, uh, people who are supposed to be revolutionaries and, and who recognize that uh, Africans, uh, uh, what do, how do they put it, uh, that, that somehow uh, uh, homosexuality is, uh, is foreign to Africa, to the women bashing, and we've gone through the whole thing, the women you know, have to walk behind the men, this other kind of nationalist stuff. Uh, uh, in, you know, all of this stuff that serves to split the African nation and the African working class works against us and it works for white power, white imperialism. So that's the fundamental thing that I want to say about it. Now, the other thing I want to say is that despite the fact that it emerges at this time, uh, is a statement of somebody uh, who doesn't like African people think, one, the question of reparations is a really important question that's, uh, that's got traction, that they need to try to deflect and take someplace else. That doesn't make them different uh, from the candidates from the Democratic Party who wants to tell us what reparations is and how it should be achieved and other liberals who uh, gravitate and revolve around them. And the other thing is that the question of Africa uh, is something that uh, the ruling class understands is a critical question of, of this time. And so they want to grab and define what that question is. So they're not saying that you're not an African, uh, that you're a Negro or not an African. They're not going that way. They're saying that you're some kind of uh, a, a descendant of African slavery, or, or American descendant of slavery, or some other nonsense like that. So it is recognition, if, even if it's a backhanded, left-handed recognition of the critical nature of these questions that the party, African People's Socialist Party, uh, is not only grappling with, but leading around, and that creating actual revolutionaries engaged in revolutionary organizations here and around the world to deal with. And uh, I don't appreciate any kind of politic or so-called theory that would separate African people here from Africa any place else. And this is not even new in some ways, how it's characterized as new. Uh, but the whole Black Belt South thing, the whole new African phenomenon that somehow would separate Africans here uh, from Africans every place to take us out of the same dialectical process uh, that gave rise to imperialism that's going to be necessary to understand to win our freedom. I mean, they serve the same purpose and, and we've been fighting this since our inception and we'll continue to fight against this manif as it manifests itself in the real world. Uhuru. Um, the same person is here who's also looking at Kuwait um, asks, who do we prioritize the message to? Oftentimes the worldview of older generations are rigid on simply, it's rigid to simply changing the system that things have clearly gotten better. Do we just focus on the younger generation? I don't think this is a generational issue except that um, many instances, younger people are open to new ideas. Uh, 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 but, you know, we see, you know, 16-year-old sellouts, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, in fact, uh, in s our experiences lately in this country, we saw coming into Ferguson, Missouri, after the uh, uprising by the African working class there, uh, the, 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 these uh, African, young African students in particular, uh, who, uh, you know, worked for uh, Soros and worked for uh, billionaires who came in with the, the hijack, the movement that was initiated by the African working class. Many of them were young on the ground. So the question is not so much generational uh, as it is class consciousness, uh, what role that plays uh, uh, in uh, their worldview. Uh, I think that's a fundamental uh, issue that we're confronted with. Uhuru. Uhuru. He has one final question. Um, what age would you recommend to start introducing children to concepts such as socialism, politics, etc.? 
Well, I learned to read when I was in diapers. So as, uh, I think you, you, this process, if you're lucky, you have an opportunity uh, to introduce uh, children uh, to uh, this concept uh, during their mother's pregnancy. Uh, you know, that is to say that hopefully that uh, she will be a part of the movement uh, uh, that we are, uh, uh, you know, building to change this world. There's, it has to be a way of life. The, what we are uh, confronted with is uh, as slavery and colonialism uh, as a way of life. And we have to create uh, uh, the struggle against uh, slavery and colonialism as a way of life. And so from the very inception, from the very beginning, from the emergence of consciousness, uh, uh, even pre-consciousness, uh, we should uh, create communities and what have you, revolutionary communities. I'm not talking about this kind of stuff where we get these middle-class uh, Africans uh, who set up their middle-class schools uh, that's attended by other middle-class Africans uh, who can afford to come to them and bring their children. Uh, but I'm talking about uh, revolutionary communities. Uh, uh, of, uh, of, of folk who are actually engaged in struggle to overturn this social system. And our children need to be involved uh, in this process as well. Uhuru. Uhuru. Um, so we kind of don't have any more questions. I did um, want to acknowledge and maybe want to speak to it, Chairman. Um, today is the birthday of Comrade Omoala Kipfein, um, African revolutionary giant um, who, who <laughs> Just, um, just a loyal, fierce member of the African People's Socialist Party, who we re who recently passed in July of this year, and um, you know, just the, the history of the party is, you know, Kay Fing is all throughout this hi the history of our party and movement. And uh, I don't know if you wanted to um, speak to. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, there's a picture of uh, Kamran Omawale Kay Fing uh, in my office. Um, um, on the wall near my desk, and uh, it is a picture of Kay Fing uh, when uh, both, uh, you know, younger and dynamic forces really engaged in fighting to change the world. And Kay Fing uh, was one of the first people I met who was an actual, who actually was a revolutionary, who actually uh, was committed to overturning this social system, and who lived like it. Um, uh, and um, he was beloved by, by um, revolutionaries and, and, and peoples who were engaged, people who were engaged in concrete struggles. He was the first person, for example, from the party to meet with Union de Barrio, uh, the Mexican National Liberation Movement, uh, to bring a relationship between our two parties together. Uh, he traveled all over the most dangerous places in southern uh, United States, and particularly in North Georgia, and uh, uh, doing political work. We, we did it every place. He was uh, threatened uh, with death in Chicago, Illinois, uh, by, uh, we don't know exactly who those forces were, but who considered themselves revolutionaries uh, at one time, and uh, he's just been there. He was there all the time, and he uh, there was no sacrifice that Kay Fing would not make. Uh, there was no danger that he would not encounter uh, for uh, the benefit of our struggle. And uh, I remember him with, uh, with great love uh, and appreciation. And uh, all of us should uh, try to live up uh, to uh, Omawala Kay Fing uh, who he was, um, who he, uh, the contributions he made in terms of helping to shape and define uh, the African People's Socialist Party itself. So yeah, I appreciate that. And he uh, was a person who loved the Burning Spear newspaper. And I, I like to mention Kay Fing uh, to those slothful people in the party. We were talking earlier, comrade director, about how uh, K. Fing's position was, uh, uh, if you're not feeling well, and there was Comrade Jackson who came in, and uh, she was feeling wonderful, and I was wondering what made her feel wonderful, and she said that uh, she and another comrade had gone out and sold all of their burning spears, and, and that was K. Fing's philosophy. He says, 
that uh, if you're not feeling well, if things not going right, et cetera, grab a bundle of burning spear newspapers and go out among the people and nothing will lift your spirits more uh, than taking that on. So that was our comrade, Omawale K. Fing, Uhuru. And Kamara Mwala was African international. Indeed. Uhuru. So when I say Mwala Kefing, we say long live. Mwala Kefing! Long live! Uhuru. Um, so we got people all throughout saying long live on the chat. Uhuru. Uhuru. Um, so that's, that's all we have for questions and comments, Chairman. I don't know if you have any closing remarks about um, the study before we get into um, the announcements. No, I'm, I'm, I just want people to really have an appreciation for theory, for philosophy. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, it's not as daunting as, as the intellectuals and petty bourgeoisie would have us to believe, even though they use big words and stuff like that that we might not be accustomed to. But if you read the stuff, uh, uh, philosophy, if it doesn't reflect reality, it's BS anyway. So yeah, you, can, you can see through most of this stuff and uh, I, there's a comrade who's in our party who doesn't even read that damn well, but she's one of the most, uh, I believe, uh, uh, accomplished uh, uh, dialecticians, if you will, you know, like uh, in, our, in our party, in our movement. So um, please don't be afraid of it, but I want you to study it. I want you, we, what we are part, part of what we're trying to do in the party is to really uh, recreate a culture of, uh, of uh, working class intellectuals. And, um, and don't be intimidated by that concept of intellectuals, because uh, most of the people who we call intellectuals, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. So uh, don't be intimidated by that. So study, please study and do the work, uh, and the work will confirm or uh, challenge what it is uh, that you've studied. It will either validate it or I would discredit it, but you need to have the two of them. We say there has to be a unity of practice and theory. Uhuru. Well, thank you so much, Chairman, for that amazing study, and we just want everyone to know that if your questions or comments were not addressed, that our moderators will be correspond with you and make sure that the Chairman does see your questions and comments and that we can get them to you. So thank you so much, Chairman, for that amazing study, and we just want everyone to know that if your questions or comments were not addressed, that our moderators will correspond with you and make sure that the Chairman does see your questions. This study was brought to you by the Department of Adaptation and Propaganda, winning the war of ideas. For your worldwide revolutionary news and analysis, visit theburningsphere.com. For Revolutionary Radio, dynamic shows and music by Africans all around the world, tune into Black Friday 6.3 FM broadcasting out of St. Petersburg, Florida, and accessible via the Black Friday 96 app for Apple and Android or online at blackfriday96.org. Did you unite with what you heard today and want to learn more about how you can get involved with the African Socialist Party? Visit APSCAGURU.org for all information regarding how you can apply. Get Burning Spear Media's new limited edition poster, a reproduction of the front page of a historic December 1982 edition of the Burning Spear newspaper, featuring coverage of the first international tribunal on reparations for black people. Get yours before they're gone at burningspearmarketplace.com. Order your copy of Chairman Molly and Chantella's latest book, Vanguard, The Advanced Attachments of the African Revolution, the political report to the Seventh Congress of the African Socialist Party at burningspearmarketplace.com. Time is running out. Sign up for the Marcus Garvey Legacy Cruise, taking place December 14th through the 19th. The Marcus Garvey Legacy Cruise is the annual fundraiser held to support the work of the African Socialist International. The African Socialist International is an organization made up of African people located virtually on every continent, dedicated to overcoming the conditions faced by African people worldwide. Our cruise destinations are Half Moon Bay Bahamas, Nassau Bahamas, and Freeport Bahamas. You can enjoy political education on board with the chairman, on and off board excursions, and more food than you can eat. To book your trip, visit www.org <coughs> or call the travel agent Linda Stern at 732-972-4171. If you want to further support the ASI and the Marcus Starry Legacy Cruise, make a donation by visiting approvelegacycruise.org. Start preparing now for the African People's Socialist Party's 2020 plenary following our 7th Congress, happening February 1st to the 3rd in St. Petersburg, Florida, the Vanguard Up, the Unity of Theory and Practice. Registration will be open soon, but you can start by booking your trip now. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Burning Spirit TV on YouTube to catch every episode of the Omala Tommy Sunday Study. Uhuru. Uhuru.